Hey, good morning, everyone. Voice Pastor Q. Thank all you guys for joining us again for our 9 a.m. service here at the Homicide Hotel. We're so blessed to have you guys to be a part of our ministry today here at Word Moves. Got a great program lined up for you guys today. So thank you guys for tuning from your home devices, your computer. We definitely appreciate the uh, support this morning. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading read by, our, I'm sorry, our inspirational reading read by our very own Connie Cuffin. Then after that, we'll have our scripture reading read by my sister, Rashawn Smith Wood. And then we'll go with the really to our dance this morning. And then we'll have the word of God. So Connie, come on up this morning. And we'll have the uh, inspirational reading. Uh, reading this morning, come on up and then we'll have the word. Y'all stay tuned. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good Welcome morning. back Good once again to Word Moves. I see everybody smiling. I yeah. see glad to see you <laughs> <laughs> in the house of God. I'm, I'm glad to see everybody smiling. <laughs> And, um, welcome, welcome to Word Moves once again, those online and those here in person, those um, first comers also. And thank you for our um, uh, <laughs> musical <laughs> selections. Um, we really do appreciate um, I'm going to be reading about just a touch, and it's going to be coming from Revelations chapter 1, verse 9. And it goes, then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Just a touch. It was just a touch, but it made all the difference to Cole. As his small team was preparing to do charitable work in a region known for hostility to believers in Jesus, his stress level began to rise. When he shared his words with a teammate, his friend stopped, placed his hand on his shoulder, and shared a few encouraging words with him. Colin now looks back on that brief touch as a turning point, a powerful reminder of the simple truth that God was with him. John, the close friend and disciple of Jesus, had been banished to the desolate island of Patmos for preaching the gospel when he heard a loud voice like trumpet. That startling event was followed by a vision of the Lord himself, and John fell at his feet as though dead. But in that frightening moment, he received comfort and courage. John wrote, he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. God takes us out of our comfort zone to show us new things, to stretch us, to help us grow. But he also brings the courage and comfort to go through every situation. He won't leave us alone in our trials, nor forsake us. He has everything under control. He has us in his hands. So just in my journey with God, I found that he does take me more as more as I get closer to God. I see that he does take me out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but I know that it's all for good because when we're out of our comfort zone, he's trying to teach us and um, show us new things mm -hmm. so that we can flourish out and show others what we know about God. So when you go through your day or your week or your year, just know that when you're being taken out of your comfort zone, it's all good, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because he's showing us new things so that we can show others new yeah, things. Amen. That's all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'll be reading Psalms 100, verses 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is God, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. May the Lord have a blessing. Here, do a read of his word this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This time we will have a, a special dance, special guest for us. Uh, the rails here. She's going to do a, a praise dance for us this morning. Hope you guys are blessed by the praise dance this morning. Amen. 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 Satan's trying to stop 
a blessing right there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We had a treat this morning. Praise God. Let, us, let me turn your attention to your Bibles, to the book of uh, 2 Samuel. I believe it's 2 Samuel. Turn with me there this morning. I believe it's 2 Samuel. The teaching come. I have so much confirmation this morning about the word. Listen to all that's going on. So much confirmation that God was giving me about the word he gave me this morning. So I thank for the word and the confirmation that was given to me about all of this. 2 Samuel uh, chapter 6. That's what we'll be this morning. 2 Samuel chapter 6. I appreciate that. My God is falling apart. They say if your Bible is falling apart, they like this. That's right. That's right. That's a good thing. Amen. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Let me pray, Father. We just thank you for the anointing that's in this room right now. We thank you for the praise dance. We thank you, Father God, for all the musical selections. Give you honor, glory, and praise, oh Father God. Lord, help me today to deliver your word that it may match what you're doing here in the spirit. Thank you, Father God, for all the participants. We thank you, Father God, for the deliverances. And just having this room, oh Father, Father God, filled with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 6, if you're there, in verse 13, it says, So it was in those bearing the ark, it was so it was, when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, that the sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing linen of ephod. Let me, let me stop you right there, because a lot of times we have uh, read in the Bible that David danced, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you see that David danced, you heard that the Bible says that that people taught, and I, I didn't notice I went to school, that people taught that when David danced, that David danced naked, right? Okay, David wasn't a stripper. They was that's what they made it look like. David was dancing naked in front of the women. That's not what it was. I want you to get a great picture because when Darrell was dancing, you notice that she had on the purple robe. Okay, yes. see, David used to walk around town in his purple robe, right? But then one day he says, "But when I go praise the Lord and I'm going to dance before the Lord with all my might," he said, "This time I'll put on the ephod. The ephod was linen." Now you got to understand, and you know you you can't be doing certain things and see through linen because you can see through everything if you know what I'm saying. David said that normally when I normally do my regular dance, I'm in my regular clothes, but when I dance before the Lord, I'm gonna put on linen so you can see through. See, you thinking this is something provocative, but the Spirit was speaking something. David says when I go before the Lord and I dance, I want everything to be revealed. Listen to what I'm saying. See, I want everything. Notice that the Bible said that David danced before the Lord with all his might. This wasn't no two-step. Come on. See, I'm, see, some of y'all cool like me. You in the club and you can't, you dance differently in the club than you do in your house. But sometimes you dance a certain way in your house when nobody ain't looking. But then when you in the club, it's more laid back. But you do some different type of dances when you're by yourself. A praise dance, right? Because you're worried about who around. Sometimes you can't even praise in church because who Amen. you're around. Amen. Uh -huh. I'm Amen. one of those people, I praise differently in the car. My, my praise of God is a little bit more intimate. I go in the closet, I cry on the way to work. That's just who I am as a person, I'll tell you that. But I won't do all that in front of you, but that doesn't mean that your relationship is better than uh, mine because we just <laughs> different in our intimacy, you know? David said, well, this time when I'm dancing, I'm going to dance with, he, the Bible says that David danced with all his might, meaning that he didn't hold anything back. And the thing about it, not only was David not holding anything back, the Bible said that you could clearly see through his clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, one time um, in, 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 in my sinning days, I went to the gentleman's club, right? And I was, you know, as the guys, some guys, when we sit at the tables and after the women come off stage, we talk with them, right? And um, I was having a conversation. I don't know why I remember this conversation, but I do. And I remember asking the young lady, I said, listen, how is it you can get up here and walk around naked? You know what she said? She said, because for one, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And I know what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. She said, so when people come in here, it's like I'm not even naked. Like that took me to back to Genesis. I said, Adam and Eve walked around the yes. garden of Eden yes. naked. Notice when you're in them gentleman clubs and places like that, everybody's walking around naked, but don't feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Adam and Eve walked around in the garden, but did not feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. You walk around your house naked. Mm -hmm. 
And somebody got to say, hey, you decent down there before I come down? <laughs> Notice that when you first get in a relationship, you act you dress, but then when y'all get comfortable, come on now. When y'all get comfortable, you just come on out the shower with no, no towel on and nothing. You don't care because you're comfortable, right? I don't mind you seeing me naked anymore. Go on something. The Bible says that Adam had to cover himself up because after he took of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, he knew that he was naked, meaning that he knew he had some insecurities. Sometimes we can't even go to the beach and, and go to South That's Beach right. without wearing a long shirt. Listen, I don't care if you didn't spend all that money to go to South Beach, Venice Beach, <laughs> Cancun, you, your body you busted, go. you should let it all hang out. You, you, you shouldn't be in the deep end with a long t-shirt on. You should be comfortable enough to let your stomach hang over. That's fine. That's you. That's right. But notice you say people come to me on a train and say, Pastor Q, I got to get my body right because I'm going to the beach. You know, uh -uh. you need to go to enjoy the beach. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't, but this is what God was teaching. You shouldn't worry about how you look. You're spending too much time on it. Mm -hmm. Well, back to this thing, everybody walking around naked. And she said, well, you know what? I know what I'm here for, and I know what I come to do. I'm not worried. All, everything with me is exposed. I have no insecurities. The thing about it, what David was saying is that when I dance before the Lord, I want to be naked. I want everything to be revealed. Like it was in the garden of Eden. I'm not going to hide anything. You know, it's like when, when we praise and we worship. They say you walk around the house naked, and you know what I'm saying? You get to a place around your mate where you say, you know what? I'm comfortable now. I'm comfortable exposing who I am around you. I don't feel the insecurities about my bad body when I'm around you. How many of you guys like that? I don't want nobody else to see my body. You probably know of a great teacher in the scripture too when Noah's son Ham saw yeah. him naked. Yes. Noah felt, Noah was, man, Noah cursed Ham for that, for seeing him naked. Great teaching of the Bible. That his son has saw him naked. So in the teaching of the scripture, David said, when I worship God, I don't care who's watching. And you know what? I'm going to take off the king's garment and have on the see-through garment, the linen garment. And guess what? I don't care who's watching. And he says, you know what? I'm going to dance with all of my might, right? Verse 16 says, now the ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. She mad because David worshipped him. But one of the reasons why she mad because David worshipped him because David got on linen. For the young people, gray sweatpants. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> David out there worshipping in gray sweatpants. And there's women around, all type of women around. And she upset. He got this linen thing on. You can see everything. And he just out there just popping it. Working. <laughs> working, you know. You ever be out and <laughs> your significant other come and catch you dancing some type of way, old dirty dancing on the floor. But let me, but let me, let me teach you something about it because God wants me to talk about this. Because of my ignorance, when I was a kid, there's a lot of guys, we young guys, we just see a kid, a lot of you guys in here. The guys, we thought that the way a woman danced was her inviting us to have sex. Look how she danced. She's she going to become, and then I come trying to scoot up behind her. She's like, uh. I'm like, well, you was chopped probably like you wanted me to come over. She said, no, that's just me being free dancing. I'm sorry that you mistook that's right. me being free as a sexual invitation. Oh man. See, I learned in church that everybody that's dancing and praising God ain't praising because they're in a on. good place. Come on. They praising the dance and worshiping God because he has brought them through something. So right. every that's dance right. you see ain't a praise dance. That's Sometimes right. it's a dance Woo. of acknowledgement, a dance of thank you, a dance of praise. God, thank you for bringing me where you brought me from. People in church, the people move real fast, yeah. they get up and they do that Woo. dance Woo. and they say, I'm going to dance like David danced, yeah. meaning that, listen, I've been holding in this praise for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you got to have a certain amount of courage to do that. Yeah. Yes. Because everybody can't get up and do that. Woo. 
I don't know who you are, but I'm not the person that starts the party. Are you the person when the music come on? You notice there's people waiting to get on the floor. Then one person get on the floor. Then everybody come in, but it only takes somebody to initiate. But can I teach you, the person on the wall wants to get up and do something now. The person sitting down want to get up and do something, but they can't praise and they can't dance. Why? Because they're worried about what people are thinking around them. But some of us are free. We get on that floor and we do our dance and we say, you know, I don't care how we look, who's watching. I'm going to praise because it has nothing to do with anybody in the room. Sometimes you can't worship and serve God because you're worried about who in the room, how it looks. David said, I'm taking these clothes off and I'm going to praise before the Lord and I don't care how it looks. He says, I'm going I'm to get to a place where I'm stripped, where everything is revealed. That's how Adam and Eve were in the garden. They were in the garden and they were naked. They didn't have any clothes on. The reason why, a spiritual teacher, because their flesh was their clothing. And, and it was clothing their spiritual man. And they knew who they were. But when they took up the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they no longer could dance and walk naked before the Lord because now they knew some things about themselves. How many of us, I'm like this, I'm the type of person that when I don't like to wear certain, certain shirts because I got a little pudge sometimes still doing my ab work and I don't want that shirt to show that ab sticking out, that little gut sticking out. So I got to buy shirts that hang over a little over. You know what I'm talking about now. When your body ain't where you want it to be, you got to dress accordingly to hide certain things. But Adam and Eve walked around. The Bible never said Adam and Eve had a six pack and all that. It said they walked around the garden during the garden and they wasn't in shape in my body. They was not in shape. They didn't have, they wasn't lifting weights. They wasn't doing crunches. Adam had a bird chest. Eve flashed my TV. <laughs> and they walked around with all their insecurities. I'm teaching though. Are you able to walk around God? With all your insecurities, don't care what people think about you, and, and be like retribution and go to that park and let it all hang out. You're not like retribution. Retribution went down the slide, went to the park in a two piece. I need retribution's type of carriage. You go to the beach sometime. In California, got a new beach. You can walk up here. I can't go to a new beach. I want people to see me. You too worried about what people see. I'm teaching this message now. If you would get out of a place or worth, stop worrying about who's around you, you can get free. You can get delivered. Yes. Yes. Amen. It's people that have been doing praise and worship, but they want to jump up. They want to praise. They want to do all type of things, but we're too cool. Come on, man. Come on the floor and dance. Pride. Amen. Come on, Dad. Nah, 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 you won't be out there. Want to dance, though. Want to dance for holding up the wall. Too cool. Well, sometimes you can't sweat your hair out, too. That's the thing. I got time for all that. But David didn't mind sweating his hair out. David didn't mind how he looked. The Bible said that David danced naked. Well, he had a linen suit on, was basically naked. The Bible said he danced with all his might, yeah. sweat and tears, didn't care who was looking. Amen. But something's going on here. McCall, Saul's daughter, which is David's wife. Let me teach you a story now. If you know anything about the book of Samuel, you know that Saul did not like David because David ended up taking over the kingdom. So what Saul did one day, he tried to get David killed. He told David, I think it was, he says, listen, I need you to go get me two to four hundred um, of the, uh, I think it was the Philistines clothing, basically, right? Because he felt like that there was no way David was going to be able to do that. And he says, listen, I'll give you my daughter if you can go uh, do this task with the Philistines. David said, okay, I'll go kill those Philistines for your daughter. But Saul didn't think he was going to be able to do it because such a great task. Guess what? David went and, and uh, killed all the Philistines, brought it back, and then Saul had to give him his daughter, which is McCall. But Saul always knew that the daughter that he gave King David was going to be a hindrance. Get yeah, blessed with what I'm saying. Sometimes the enemy sets you up with somebody that's going to be a hindrance. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> See, the thing about it is, is that the Bible says that 
Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart for his praise. Yeah. Listen, has God ever, have you ever, through your path of life, met somebody you were dating or seeing and had insecurities yes. about the thing that you love to do? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you meet them people out here. There's people out here. Why you keep going to that church? You want to see that old pastor? Some people have stopped going to this church because they significant other didn't want them around me. I have lost clients. I remember I was training girl to gym. Her boyfriend just standing over there watching. He stopped every training session. That's right. That's right. You going to that old church so you can see that old woman. I don't like you going to that ministry. People, you have to watch the insecurities that the devil used to work through people to stop you from doing what you love to do. Yeah, sometimes you get, man, all you want to do is go out dancing, and dancing, and looking like old freak, looking like old slut, looking how you're wearing. Next thing you know, you don't want to go dance. You don't want to go to church. You don't even want to wear your sexy clothes anymore because you're in love with somebody and their insecurities have stopped you from being you. Amen, amen. Man won't let you go out. Won't let you do nothing because he got all these insecurities. And every time you want to do something, he he think you're doing this or she think you're doing that. You are connected to somebody that has these insecurities and it's stopping you from doing what you love to do. Toxic. Toxic. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Sometimes we connect to people and every time we want to do something, it makes them uncomfortable. But it's the thing that we love to do. Have you ever been in a relationship or had to feel like you couldn't be you because of other people? I think you should wear a suit. I think you should leave. <laughs> I think you should go get you a, uh, you should go on down to a good Baptist church where they wearing them robes because I'm not putting no suits on to make you feel uncomfortable. Make you feel comfortable. Well, you know, you're up there and I just, I just can't stay focused. Well, listen, you work every day and you got a work husband and you ain't missed a day. Mm. But then you want to say because I'm dressed a certain way, you can't follow along with the work. When you got a work husband that come to work with his button all the way down every day and you ain't quit that job yet. <laughs> Anything not to get the word of God. Amen. Want to blame me though. Want me to be all dressed up, tight up here. In a row. Yeah. Sweating real bad. Make you feel comfortable hiding things. I told God, listen, I said, God, when he gave me this word, he gave me the message to be able to deliver to his people. God says, be transparent before my people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ain't no need to dress it up. See, the thing about it is that when David was dancing naked, there was a lot of people turned off. Get blessed. But then there was a lot of people turned on. When I say turned on, somebody say, you know what? He ain't dancing and praising religiously. He free with his. Yeah. See, this is what God showed me. This is great teaching. I want you to understand this. Sometimes being who you are called to be in God is going to run off all the wrong people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's going to draw the right people. That's right. That's right. That's right. But sometimes we get discouraged as I have been discouraged when people are leaving because you being you. Yeah. I can't let you. And then I, well, maybe I do need to change the people leaving. No, God says, listen, you got to stay doing what you're doing because it's not that the wrong people are, are leaving. The right people is coming. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, you, you got to meet somebody who is comfortable with you going out and shaking a thing and knowing that you coming back home and that you ain't going out and just, you know what I'm saying, freaking on everybody and you trying to you know, do things like that. You got to be somebody who's secure and letting you be you with respect. The Bible didn't say that David was soliciting sex. He was dancing, praising and who? to the Lord, right. and her observation was, look at him out there showing off of them gray sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> David out there praising. This has nothing to do with her, but she's upset. Yeah. Listen, let me tell you what, the enemy will uh, allow people to become attached to you to make you feel uncomfortable about being you. That's why it's always somebody you know got something to say about what you do. And that's why I get away from them people. I think that if you was to do this and you, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me make all the wrong mistakes being who I want to be. Let me learn. <clears throat> Let me learn. It may not be for you. 
So you must understand that when God has call, called you, he, he, he called you to a certain type of people, certain type of ministry. Like I tell everybody, listen, I'm not for everybody. Yes. Listen, once you become for everybody, you become nobody. If everybody like you and you have conformed, you ever notice that you be poor so many places trying to please everybody? That's what's wrong with a lot of you. Trying to please your mother. Trying to please your father. Trying to please your husband. And then you then lost yourself. You have a nervous breakdown. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> trying to please everybody. McCall is upset because she sees David and she doesn't like this. But remember though, this is his wife. This has become a hindrance though. Listen, verse 18 says, when David finished offering, burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Go to verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household, and McCall, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. Mm. Now, she already saw a thicker woman. She already, he don't know she's mad at him. That's why I like this teaching, right? <laughs> he don't know she's mad at him. So he about to get the thunder. He come home, he's blessing the house. Bless the Lord. And she had already seen him dancing. He come in the house and her face sticks. He going to know something wrong. Listen what she says. How glorious was the king of Israel today? <laughs> How was your day, king? <laughs> My baby was good. I went out there praising but he can tell her face. It's the way a woman say something. She being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. So how was the how was the gym today? Your little job, your little boo was dead. The little one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, he come to work today. Mm -hmm. Every time I come up here, she always in your office. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Uh huh, uh huh. How was how was praise today? How was when you was blessing? Mm -hmm. I was the king of Israel today. Everything good, baby? What's up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of all his maid servants. King, you supposed to be a pastor. <laughs> you supposed to be a pastor. Got me looking all dumb for my friends. Calling me, talking, look at King David all day with great sweatpants on, singing and dancing and worshiping the Lord. With your great sweatpants on. Ugh. You anything. You anything, Mo. Anything. You anything. Ugh. I got to go to work and my co workers got to be knowing that King David. Dancing, linen, swinging, jangling in front of all my friends. How can I go out? Got me looking real dumb in the town. Worrying about you. Oh, about her. Oh. A woman has a, the ability to, to make a man feel some type of way. Now, David feels some type of way because he loves his wife. You feel some type of way because you love your significant other and you don't want to upset him. He probably thinking like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't my intent. Uh, I was out there on the dance floor just dancing. I can't control how the people think of me because I'm free. Yes. Sometimes when you used to, used to dance in the opening because you got one of the more Ike Turners at home, you got to go dance in the corner. Some of y'all got to dance in the corner because you got to turn at home. I'm being real now. Or you don't want to hear because you, you're in the same place where your boyfriend or your girlfriend friends hang out. So when you dance, you got, oh, key friends, and I got the, you got the two-step. You know, you really want to pop that thing, right? But because his friends in there, you got to dance a certain way. Or her friends in there, you can't be seen talking to nobody. You know, I seen pastor talking to this girl. That's why when I'm over, they real quick, hey, how you doing? Go on. Because <laughs> people ain't watching. I don't want them to think we hollering at one of them. You know, I'm going to pass up a whole church. Ain't that bad that you got to be that That's way, though? Sad. <laughs> it's sad. I'll be complaining some sometimes. And, and, and because of the way the world is, Somebody see me dress, talking to a woman that's half dressed, they automatically like, pass over there. I told you it wasn't no good. I could be invite them to church. That's right. That's right. But listen, somebody gonna say, Pastor, you need to stay away from me with the appearance of sin. That's what the Bible says, right? Mm. So I gotta watch who I talk to because I'm more worried about what you gonna think. Now, Pastor Q, I'm gonna keep on talking and biting. I don't care how she dress or how he dressed. Yeah, amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't want to 
one time I was out and um, a friend of mine used to do fashion show. He was a gay guy. He come talk to me. And I remember somebody came and said, that, 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 this time wasn't Pastor Q. I'm like, man, it don't look good. I know you're not gay, but it don't look good. you talking to that gay guy, man. It just might make people think a certain way. And I'm like, man, I know who I am. Get away from me. I can talk to who I want to talk to. I don't care who they are. That don't make me who I am. I don't care if RuPaul stand in front of me. I'm going to be me. But a lot of times, see, this will happen. Uh, Paul had to check Peter because Peter would get around the uh, uh, the Jews and act one way. And then he'd get around the... Um, what would, what would they call him back then? Then he would get around the unsaved in so many words, right? That he act a certain way around them. You know, he he, he he was being fifty. It's like you know, you in, in, in church you one way, but then when your church people, that's right. Yeah. What are you doing? Talk to more hustlers over them people. In front. I could be witnessing to them. Pastor wants you to do outreach, but when he see you talking to drug dealers and strippers, there's something wrong with that. Who am I supposed to talk to, Pastor? You want me to do the resume, then, then minister, you'll be talk, find out who they are for that because people are so what people say, guilty by association, mm -hmm. birds of a feather flock together. What was Pastor talking to that prostitute about? Mm -hmm. Salvation. But if I allow your insecurities and how you feel about everything, you ever have to see what happens. We allow people, and this why the gospel can't get spread properly and appropriately is because we're worried about who we minister to and who's watching. What that man talking to me for out the church? He's asking when the service is going to be. You don't need to be talking to man. He wanted to ask you something. He asked me, I'm your husband. Okay, well he didn't know you my husband and he was asking when next time we have service and Bible study. Now she got a long car ride home because of your insecurities. I'm going to tell y'all something I want you to think about. When y'all be speaking to us and stuff at the mall, y'all be giving us long car rides home. Y'all speak to us and don't speak to our booth. Why she speak to you and didn't speak to me? And why he speak to you? But he don't never speak to me. She don't never say nothing. Like, what's going on? I got to deal with that the whole car ride home. Make my whole Saturday messed up. Because you want to, hey, Pastor Q. You don't never speak to me when I'm by myself. Now you want to speak when I'm with my booth. <laughs> The greeting's always different when you put your significant up. Hey! <laughs> Norm is, hey, what's up? You trying to make my boo feel some type of way. Yeah. See, David was dancing, made his boo feel some type of way, but he wasn't even thinking about the people that's around. That was before him and God. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch people. They'll, they'll, they'll try to change you, man. Mm -hmm. Make you who they want you to be. Mm -hmm. And then when you stop doing that, you change, you booze. You know, I just stop being who you want me to be. I'm stepping out into me. Yes. Wear what I want to wear. Yes. Do what I want to do. Go what I want to go. Just because I go out don't make me a freak, don't make me promiscuous because I like to dance. <laughs> I remember in my ignorance, a long time ago when I seen people doing pole dancing classes, I thought those were for the women at the strip club. No, that's for some people. Exercise. Just like the dance, it's good exercise. Yes, it is. Two different type of people. So you got to understand, and dance in, in different countries is a form of worship, a form of expression. Yes. Yes. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Notice when kids get their hand pops, hand pops fine, they just go and they move. They don't know what to say. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, you give it all through your body. Mm -hmm. It's a form of worship. It's a form of expression. Mm -hmm. That's why when you go to see the Africans, they be dancing and stuff. Man, listen, I watched something. I don't know if it's with um, the Latino. And you see how they dance and they get up. And even in, in you, you go to uh, Jamaica and Trinidad, you see how close they be bumping and grinding. Ain't nobody going home with each other. Form of expression. Naked too. People have dirty that I couldn't be doing all that. It don't mean the same thing to them as it means to you. Right. That's right. You gotta understand. Yeah. But somebody else is making you uncomfortable about what you like to do. Mm -hmm. 
All you want to do. And no, it ain't about no praise dance. It's just about you getting up there and dancing from the men at the church. I know what you're doing. Me or the church. Many, many women and then many men have stopped going to church because somebody's sitting at home watching football feeling uncomfortable. Notice is the one that don't want you to go to church and the one don't go to church at all. Yeah. They don't want to come with you either. Yeah. A silent to stop you. But you love them though. We married to them. I was married to them. I'm comfortable with everything you do for God. That's why I'm not married no more. I'm comfortable with everything I do. I'm comfortable with every woman that come through the door. Who's she? Why she coming? I posted it. <laughs> I invited him. Mm. She ain't here for no word. Long car ride home. <laughs> Everybody wants to sleep with me. Everybody wants to sleep with you. What are you doing? Everybody wants to sleep with you. Everybody wants to sleep with me. You know the problem with people? We think everybody think like us. Come on. That's the problem with people. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We think everybody think like us. They can't go out, they can't do nothing because of your own insecurities. That's right. That's right. That's who McCall is. You know, the thing about it is Saul is already dead, right? But here he is, his daughter is still causing havoc and uncomfortability. That's yeah. what David said. She said, listen, she says, uh, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. David, you ought to look like anything. You're a king. Kings don't dance naked. Pastors don't dress like that. Your pastor doesn't. That's tradition. See, dressing like I dress and being who I am, I've lost a lot of people and I will continue to lose a lot of people. And guess what? I'm okay with that. Because you know what? There's not a sign in heaven that says anything saying is justifiable that because you saw the way I dress and how I carried along, the reason why you didn't go to church and receive Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. That's not a great justification. I went to the Bible book school yesterday. I was making a joke. They had the men's robes and then they were like $250. I, I saw them robes and left them hanging up. That ain't my thing. I don't want a robe. I don't, I don't want the robe. Because I want to be transparent. Yeah. I want young people that dress like me and people to see me and say, you know what, man? I can have a real relationship with God being just like that. Because I hopefully that people see through the dress and see my heart. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing you want people to see. Yes. The problem with religion, that's they right. never see our heart. They see our clothes. Yes. But when we see their heart, we don't want to come back to church. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I've been church hurt by well-dressed religious people. Yes. 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 Amen. Church hurt by well-dressed religious people. Mm -hmm. And when I see religious people dressed up, I run from them. Yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you come out the store, the Joe Witters out there with their pamphlets and stuff, you real quick try to slide off because you already know there's going to be yeah. some stuff mm -hmm. that goes against everything. You know, it's not embracing. That's why when Jesus came, he didn't want to come looking like the Pharisees and Sadducees mm -hmm. dressed up because it, it, you believe it or not, when people see you coming, that's why cops have to be in the Go-Go and in the Walmart and the Burlington dressed as plain clothes so they can watch you steal it. Mm -hmm. Because you ain't going to steal it until the police can stand right there with his badge. Mm -hmm. Undercover. Undercover. Jesus is calling you to be undercover. Not an undercover Christian. He says, but in order to be able to infiltrate the enemy's camp, I need you come looking like them. That's why the Bible, and guess what the enemy says? In order for you to infiltrate the Christian's camp, you got to be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. That's what it's So the wolf say, all I got to do is dress like the sheep and I can get in. Notice this when you go, go out and they say they have a dress code. There's always somebody standing at the door saying, oh, no, no, you give me $100, Tim's, Boots, hat, 50 could be a man in a whole three-piece suit got a, uh, a Uzi in his back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, Miss Slick. <laughs> you just let a whole killer in the club. Because well, nobody thinks the guy with the suit. See, that's the, that's the mindset. Somebody said, ain't nobody going to act up when they dressed up. Shoot, world star, they're watching. Nobody thinks you're going to act up in your clean clothes. Mm -hmm. They think because you dressed a certain way, you're going to say, but when you fight, you don't care what you got on. When you thug and you from the hood, I don't care if you got your wedding dress on your tux. You will shoot that joint up. You don't care. But the mind frame is that we can get them to dress up, then most likely they won't act up. Perception. That's why people get the, you know, when we go get job interviews, we dress up bad people. You know, they say that you haven't been the person they hired since the interview? Yeah. Yes. They hired, the, they've been looking for that person at the interview the whole time you've been working there, you just haven't displayed that yet. Because you do the interview well. We all do the interview well. The interview is the, is the first date. The interview is the representative. What we want you to see. And then, we, and then when we get comfortable, we get naked. <laughs> it's not that they're acting different. They just didn't get naked in front of you yet. Wait till they get naked in front of you. Naked means they get comfortable enough to reveal. See, the first date, you're not comfortable enough to tell them who you really are because you don't want to run them away for a second or third date. So you can't wait. You say about the about fifth, sixth date, I've been dating about three months, I'm going to get naked. And then they start showing you things. You know you only can put on for so long, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you date somebody right now, everything all good. And then when they get naked <laughs> and they true colors come on, you be like, mm -hmm. I don't think this going to work. Because <laughs> what happens is, as we date, as we go before God, as Adam had to cover up himself, you start undressing insecurities. Damn, I'm going to take my coat off. Damn, I'm going to take my shoes off. <laughs> my hat off. Then she's going to take her hair off. <laughs> He take, the he take the Spanx off too. Huh? <laughs> Body magic, right? First date was body magic. She ain't gonna wear that body magic no more after you get comfortable. I read some, they say, you gotta still, you still gotta date your mate. Like you still trying to get them. You wore body magic the first date and did your face and kept your hair cut, you gotta keep on doing that. But what we do, we just do it enough just to get you and then let me get naked, get comfortable around you and let you just see me anyway. You be coming up, where your wig at? Boy, we been dating, you seen me before? I'm gonna get out of the sports center, put your face on. I ain't used to seeing you like that. <laughs> Amen. Let me say, some of us can't even go to the store without doing your face and putting certain stuff on. That's right. We don't want certain people to see it. But when you get comfortable with your life and your mate, you go to the store with your rollers on. <laughs> say it nobody, right? <laughs> when you're comfortable, you just throw on something on and go to the store. When you're uncomfortable, you got to get dressed and go to the store. Get blessed when I said that. Come on now. Somebody get blessed when I said that. When you're comfortable who you are, where you are in your life, you will throw on anything and go to the store. When you're not comfortable, you got to get dressed just to go to the corner store and get some eggs. You know dudes we do it, sunshade, sunshade, glasses, chains, cologne. Where you going? I got one on a 7-Eleven brand. Cologne and all that for milk? Yeah, you never know. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest. I'm one of them type of people like, y'all, I don't want to be seen on my bad day. You know, people, you know I want to be shocked every time I run into somebody. Man. Got a lot of haters out here. I don't want you to catch me off. I don't know, you know what I'm saying, I don't want to be caught off. You. Girl, where you going? Had to run out of store. Get some brown sugar and cinnamon. Oh. I just 
to go on the Instagram page and you don't look like that in person. Because I, mean, I put on enough clothes to hide to, to, so I want you to see what I want you to see. And then I go get naked somewhere else. That's why a lot of us walk around the house naked. But God is watching. Angels watching. God is yes. watching. Yes. Oh, Can't walk yes. around naked in front of nobody else, though. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with Adam and Eve. They, they couldn't expose themselves after they knew about their insecurities. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to this message real quick. I hear you. This is what he says. So David said to McCall, this is how David addressed his wife. It was before the Lord. Yeah. Hold up. He says, listen, first of all, I was dancing for the Lord. Amen. That's an argument. Mm -hmm. You know. You can't tell him you're doing nothing for Jesus. That has a motive behind it. Sometimes I wear what I like to wear for me. Ain't about nobody at the office. I ain't trying to get nobody. I like this. I'm comfortable with me. I work on my body. I love myself. I ain't trying to pick nothing up. I'm free in me. But notice this. You always get somebody to make you feel uncomfortable. Why that cologne today? I said, I ain't even gonna wait. Mm -mm. Let me see what you got on. Nah, mm mm. Wear it out the house. I won't be back when you get back. I changed. Got a lot of your friends. Why you ain't wearing what you bought at Nina's the other day? I ain't look right. Charlie said he couldn't wait. <laughs> that would have worked. Charlie said you couldn't wait. Yeah. And she got to make sure. She get back in the house. Charlie locked them locks. <laughs> Don't nobody want to come from the club at 3 o'clock in the morning and can't get back in their own house. <coughs> or have to fight. Go to a good old Christian. <laughs> you got to learn to compromise with your wife. If your wife doesn't like this, just compromise. It's not compromise. It's giving up who I am. Some you know the thing about this? People meet you just the way you are. They want to change you. So how you going to get up behind her when she dancing in the club then want to stop her from going to the club? You met her on Instagram. Yeah. Now you want her off Instagram. Mm -hmm. You met her on Facebook. Then you want her off Facebook. You know she's fine. I want people to look at mine. Come on. I'm not blind. I know what I see. I'm sure other people see it. But we want you to look Invisible for everybody else, but seen to us. That's what the Muslim women, the women overseas, That's do. Right. That's why they wear the cover mm -hmm. for their husband and for God. Yeah. But if you understand, the true covering is not of clothing, the covering is of God. God is your cover. Mm -hmm. yeah, Adam and Eve That's tried right. to hide their selves. Listen, there's a lot of Islam, women in Islamic faith, when they get into the faith, notice that they cover themselves so you can't see them. Let me tell you what. I don't care how covered you are. If a man wants to make love to you, he can see through all them clothes. God has given men x-ray vision. That's right. It's in my mind. I can see what I want to see. I can see through all of them. See through all of them. You know, I always thought about the story of Jacob. Remember, Jacob was working for Laban, I think, for, for Leah. Mm -hmm. He made love mm -hmm. to the wrong sister all that's night. That's right. Mm -hmm. It was a joke. Somebody said, that's because he never saw her uncovered. So when he went to touch her, he couldn't put mm -hmm. things together. He didn't know who he was making love to the whole time. whole time, he in the dock, making love to the wrong woman. Then when the daylight hit, he said, oh, my God, I got the wrong sister. Some of us have to eat, drink, and you wake up and say, what have I done, you know? Looking thing that took place. But Jacob did it too. Jacob made love to the wrong woman all night. What Laban did is he said, listen, he switched the daughters and he thought he had the one daughter and it was going to be the other daughter. All night long. Makes you wonder that when they went in the room, did they just jump at it or they never had a conversation? Never say nothing. Say my name, nothing ever happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. You in there with the wrong person the whole time. You know, I'm joking being facetious, but it's spiritual. Because sometimes you can be laying with the wrong person for the longest and not know it to the daylight here. And I'm talking about the daylight. I'm talking about the light of God. I'm not talking about the sun, the S-U-N. I'm talking about the S-O-N. 
Meaning the word, when the word hits your situation, you find out, I've been laying with the wrong person. It can be beautiful, sexy, and all that in bed, but then when the word hits your situation, the word exposes what you really have in your situation. Mm -hmm. What type of person you actually have. Mm -hmm. Everything could be good, bedroom, but then the spiritual part be way off. Mm -hmm. Let me hurry up because we got to do communion. I'm trying to squeeze this in. Remember what he says? He told, he says, David said to Bacall, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father. He checked her back. Yeah. It's before the Lord who chose me instead of your father. I know who you are. You're your father's daughter. Still got the vengeance of your father. I'm going to tell you, I don't know what this God's giving me this for somebody, but sometimes when you don't get along with her family, she has that resentment towards you. And sometimes when you don't get along with his family, he has that resentment towards you. He don't like the way you talk about his mother. She don't like the way you talk about her mother. And all, it creates a resentment. Have you ever dated somebody and you yeah. didn't like their in-laws and they thought and they act like it was okay, but for real, it created a resentment? Mm -hmm. That's what David is checking. Yeah, your father that don't like me. Mm. It's a good argument here. Instead of your father and all the house and all his house to appoint me ruler of the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. Listen to what he said. I'm going to keep on dancing the way I'm dancing. Yeah. I'm going to keep on playing my music if you like it or not. That's right. mm -hmm. He checked it right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can feel how you want to feel. I'm keep on going to word movers. I'm, I'm going to keep going to that gym. Keep on going to that job. Keep on going to that club. Because if you like it or not, you can leave. See, you can't let people put you in a situation where they dictate so much that you can't tell them, listen, you can go. When the enemy can do that, he got way too much stock in your life. And you're afraid to let them go because of how they're going to feel. David said, no, I'm king. And if you don't like how I parade myself around here, you can go. But we're going to continue to praise naked around here in grace their parents. I will not be getting rid of these grace wet pants. We're going to wear these all the time. And we're going to dance all the time with all of our might. And I don't care if your mother, you, and your girlfriends are uncomfortable, I'm going to continue to dress like this. Yeah, now what? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I will be even more undignified. Mm -hmm. David said, I'm going to turn it up a notch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, there's some good argument here. He said, I'm going to be more undignified now so that I know it makes you uncomfortable. I'm going to turn up even more. <laughs> oh, sometimes... Your woman give your friend something to come back and tell you yes, intentionally. Yes, yes. Boy, you got to see your joke down here cutting up. <laughs> cutting up down here in the chateau. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The Mirage. <laughs> Chapter 3. I bet. Black hole. Rhythm. Come on, Dad. Tricks. Chris escapes. The love. <laughs> H2O. I'm sorry. Down here cutting up real good. Dancing like she don't have nobody. Oh, oh, you out here living like you single. Dancing like you single. So now when I go out, someone's got to see who watching. Who You ever got to go somewhere and see who there first before you cut up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you, hey. You straight that thing on up. What you doing here? I saw you over there. I hate y'all. All, All y'all do is go back and tell Jerome everything. Y'all anything. Y'all nothing. <laughs> Go back and tell him every little thing I do. 
She just called your room anyway. Your friends are here. I know what they're going to tell you. It wasn't even like that. The dude I was talking to. <laughs> he went to high school with me. He worked with me. He worked with me. But I already know. Think what you want to think. He said this. I'm going to close. I will be even more undignified than this and, and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. He said, hold up. No, they're going to honor me still. See, just because you feel some type of way, because see, you got to think about it. Some people, he, what David is saying is that the people who out there dancing with me know my heart. Yes. Yes. I heard somebody say, listen, I yes. couldn't go to your church, you dressing like that. I said, that's why you don't go to my church, because the people that go to my church know my heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's why you can't go here. Because you don't know my heart. If you knew my heart and you knew my intent and you knew my motive, then you'd be here. But you judge it from the outside. And that's why you don't go to nobody's church. And I hope you don't end up in somebody's head. This is what David said. Listen. This is what David said in 23. Got to get blessed. I'm going to close. Therefore, McCall, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. She became unfruitful. Two ways the Bible taught it. Because of the bitterness, and we know what the Bible says about unforgiveness. That's she right. couldn't forgive That's David right. from that one day, and that unforgiveness created bitterness in her, and bitterness will create the fact to make you unbearing. Unbearing means the ability to be able to bear fruit. It also meant, too, that after she Amen. got in the way of David and his God, he ain't sleep with her no more. Amen. Some people been married for the last couple of years, ain't slept in the same room and had sex, and you, you just wouldn't imagine. Because that bitterness is there. Because you have made me feel comfortable about giving up my singing, giving up my catering. I didn't gave up so much for this marriage, so much for this relationship. I don't even want you to touch me. Because I didn't gave up so much for you. I ain't speaking to my family because of you. I don't talk to my friends because of you. Don't touch me. Hey, what's going on? Because I done gave up so much for you to make you comfortable. comfortable. And then my whole life is uncomfortable. It's about pleasing you. Yes. I went out. And you sit in it long enough until you, one day you get the carrots to say, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, McCall, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. Meaning King David didn't sleep with her anymore. But the thing is, if you understand the Bible, also, King David was a celibate. He had other wives. I don't want to make him sound like a saint. He had other wives too. But because of that insecurity and that spirit she had, that didn't call. Because let me say this, and I have to say this. When you get to a place where you regard a lot of older people here that can tell you this to a lot of younger people, you won't date for physical attraction. That's right. You will start dating for your purpose. Because you want to need somebody to be able to see past, yes. and you have to see yes. past all of that, and you're going to date somebody that's going to push you to be who you are in yes. God. Amen. And sometimes, Amen. and don't take this wrong, sometimes that may not be the most attractive of the two that you're trying to choose between, or three that you're trying to choose between, or ten. I don't know what your hand looks like, <laughs> but sometimes you're trying to choose. Based off the look, you can't choose off the look. It's who pushes you to be who you are spiritually. Who makes me better? Who worry about do I eat how I'm feeling? Did I read my Bible? Not what we going to eat. What? How you doing? You better find out the difference in the characters. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise Amen. Amen.